Reverend Sean David Coleman at Transformation yeah. Church. Pastor Andrew D. Hunt Jr. is our leader. Look, Reverend Randy Parker is preaching this morning. Don't touch that down. Ken TV Channel 36. Wow, RCM Comcast and Channel 99 on AT&T. to introduce to some and present to others our speaker for this morning, Reverend Randall Parker. Uh, Reverend Parker is a dear friend of mine, a dear friend of this church. Uh, ten years ago, ten years ago when we needed some encouragement, it was Reverend Parker that invited me to come over to preach and many of you came with me on more than one occasion, and he's proven to be a friend, to be a friend. He's a great man of God. He's well-educated. He's a Master's of Divinity from Northern Baptist Theological Seminary. He's also a doctoral candidate at Northern Baptist Theological Seminary. I'm very proud to call him my friend. I'm very proud to have him here on today. You're going to be blessed by none other and Dr. Randall Parker. Let us say amen to Reverend Parker all today. Because the Lord is good. 
today. Mr. Lord is there. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I don't make no apologies. I don't know about you all, but I was in the spirit. Transformations Church. I just love the name of your church. Paul said, Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transform. Say it loud. Transform. One more time. Transform. Transform. By the renewing of your mind. I thank God for your pastor, my friend, and my brother. Reverend Andrew Hunt. One good turn deserves another. And when the Lord had me assigned uh, to another church some years ago, as he told you, and I needed a preacher, I knew who to call on. Just in case y'all didn't know it, he's a preacher. Anointed and appointed to preach God's word. For such a time as this, and I'm glad I know Reverend Andrew Hunt. He loves me, and I love him. Co-laborers in the gospel. Thank you, sir, for the invitation. God bless you, and God keep you in his care. I think I've been there before, but it's been quite a while. Okay. I, yeah, yeah, I've been it before, but I, but I want y'all to act just like y'all have never seen me before. Amen! Amen. <laughs> Although you may not like the way I look, if I, if I speak the truth, say amen. amen. Now, we don't want to be here all day. Amen. You've got some chicken to eat, and I know I got some chicken to eat because every Sunday. <laughs> I heard a preacher say the chicken died so that we might live. Many chickens all over Chicago have sacrificed their lives so that we might enjoy them. And I'm going to show my gratitude in about a couple of hours. Amen! Reverend Hunt, I, I, I sort of feel like it. I feel like speaking the word for the Lord. And I cannot forget uh, my friend and my other brother, the Reverend Sean Coleman on the organ. Say amen. amen. We served together at the Big Zion Church. And I just couldn't imagine getting up preaching unless Sean was on the organ because the Holy Ghost has touched him and anointed and appointed him to lift up the praises of God in song and in music. And I thank God for the God in Him. I want to be encouraged today. Reverend Mike has another Sabbath. He's going to lead me in charge of this pulpit. Say amen, somebody. Amen. amen. So if I could just give a few more amens like that, we won't be here long. Amen. Say it again. Amen. amen. Stand to our feet. Yes,
I would be remiss if I didn't mention Liberty Baptist Church, Progressive Baptist Church, the late, great Reverend A.P. Jackson, which is where he came from, and the late, great T.E. Brown, where I came from, the Progressive Baptist Church, and the foundation that Reverend A.P. and even his son Darrell that took over and T. E. Brown and his son Rita took over and continued that great fellowship. Thank God for the legacy of those two great churches and those two great preachers. Everybody came from somewhere. Amen, y'all. I'm just letting y'all know we, we, we came, as the old folks said, uh, from good stock. From good stock. Say amen. amen. Those of you who have your Bibles, and I hope you do because I am a Bible preacher. I ain't got a lot of fancy words, amen. amen. I preach the Bible. If you have it, turn with me to Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 18. Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 18. 18. Matter of fact, this started in verse 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 17 and 18. Oh, when you have it, say amen. amen. The text reads as follows, 1 Corinthians 1 and 17. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Read verse 18 with the preacher if you don't mind. For the preaching of the cross it's to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. The, preacher the preacher is about to talk about, about, to talk about the, power the power of the cross. Of the cross. Right. Say amen. amen. You may be seated. Say it one more time. The power of the power. Of the, cross. of the cross. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is what? The power of God. I may be going back a little bit, uh, a little bit for some folk here, uh, but I remember a preacher very famous by the name of Billy Graham. Got to get no amens, but yeah. one of God's greatest preachers had the name Billy Graham. And throughout my entire Christian life, I have been amazed at the preaching power of Billy Graham. He, 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 he's well over 90 years old now. He has somewhat uh, retired from evangelism, but he has not retired from preaching. Amen, somebody. Amen. Yeah, don't retire from preaching. It, it, it's a lifetime commitment. Amen. And uh, he has preached in over 185 countries around the world. Millions of souls have been saved. More outstanding and world renowned than even the Apostle Paul. A personal minister to over 10 presidents. Not one scandal has blemished his character or his reputation. So important was he about keeping his character clean that when, it is said that whenever he waited on an, an elevator in a hotel, 
uh, when the elevator came down to his floor, if there was a woman on the elevator, he would step back. And he would not ride the elevator with that woman because he wanted his reputation to remain clean. Amen. Uh, he, he was the husband, and he still is the husband, uh, over six, uh, 70 years of marriage, to one wife. That, that used to be an important thing in the church. You were the husband of, of one wife. I'm not going to dwell on that because there may be somebody who's got more than one and got one here, one there. I'm not going to talk about that. But he's the husband of one wife, and uh, you can read about it in his autobiography uh, entitled Just As I Am. How many of you ever heard the hymn Just As I Am? See, what amazed me about whatever he preached in the Elder Crusade on the television, uh, he would always preach one subject, and that was the saving power of Jesus Christ and the gospel. The gospel. Just in case you don't know what that word is or you think you know what it is, the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. A fiery preacher in his younger days, and even though now he's been afflicted with Parkinson's disease, there was a time that he would grab the mic and stand flat-footed and preach none other than the saving power of Jesus Christ and his cross. And when he got through preaching and opened the doors of the church, the, the choir would start to sing that great hymn, Just As I Am. You talk about a stadium, just stadium as big as Soldier Field. People would come down the aisles, leave the back of there, come down to the first floor, and would give him their hand and give God their heart. And like I said, souls were saved by the millions. But it was something about the singing of that hymn, just as I am, without one plea. But that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou didst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. I come. The Holy Spirit would fill the auditoriums, just as I am, without one plea. And it would be just to begin to pop up, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou didst me come. To the old land of God I come, I come. And you would think, because see, folks get tired of hearing the same song too much, especially Sunday after Sunday. But this is every time he preached, they sang the same song, the same Holy Ghost would move through the same auditoriums, and folks would get up and give their lives to Christ. Now the question is, what, what was it? How did he do it? Why has he been so successful? The answer is, I've never heard him preach dry bones in the valley. The eagle stirs his nest. And those other great sermons that you all, that, like me that grew up in church, or grew up hearing time after time after time. He only had one text, I'm telling you, and that's the saving power of Jesus Christ. The gospel. Repeat after me, the death, death burial, burial, and resurrection, and resurrection of, Jesus Christ. of Jesus Christ. He never compromised on sin. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. I said the wages of sin is death. We don't talk about it no more, but there is a burning hell that awaits the sinner who does not repent. Whenever you turn on your news and you hear about horrendous things, about a girl 17 years old that somebody's beating on the door in the middle of the night and she can barely open the door, but they blow her away with five or six shots from a gun. Whenever you hear about Cars that are coming down the Dan Ryan Expressway and somebody just takes target practice and begins to shoot. 
I'm here to tell you that the devil is alive and well. He's going to and fro in the earth. That's what he told God one day. He had the nerve to go to heaven and tell God, God asked him, what you doing? He said, well, I've been going to and fro in the earth, seeking whom I may divide. And that place where he lives at, the burning hell awaits the sinner who does not repent. But the gift of God, I said the gift of God is eternal life. A glorious heaven awaits all those who put their hope and trust in him. Amen, somebody. Amen. I said I've come today to preach about the preaching of the cross. In his writing to the church here at Corinth, Paul is writing for the purpose of straightening out mess that he heard had been going on in the church. You know, every now and then, not here at Transformation, but at the mother church, there's mess always going on in the church. And here in this church in the Bible, the church of Corinth, there were actually folks who divided themselves in the cliques. They refused to, to agree as to who is the actual pastor of the church. Lord have mercy. Whoever baptized a certain individual, that, that person was their pastor. Uh, he did, they didn't care whether the other person liked it or not. Apollos baptized me, and Apollos is my pastor. No, Peter baptized me, Peter is my pastor. And Paul says, family, I don't care who you think your pastor is, and I'm glad I didn't baptize none of you all except two people. In case you didn't know it, Christ is the head of the church. Christ is the head of the church. Pastors are simply under shepherds. But the good shepherd, the great shepherd, is Jesus Christ, who is Lord over the whole church. He said, listen, I'm not trying to impress nobody with fancy words or use a big vocabulary because if I put myself in the way, the message of the cross will not be effective. Nobody will be saved. Nobody will be edified. If I put myself in the way and begin to announce all the degrees that I earned in seminary, they might pay more attention to the degrees than what I say instead of what God says in his word. Amen, somebody. I don't want to put myself in the way. I want God to do what he's got to do. Amen. Amen. The foolishness of preaching. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world, and he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not what? Perish. Perish. And have everlasting life. Obviously, those who did not believe will and who do we do not believe now will perish. To unbelievers, the preaching of the cross is foolishness. It did not have or make sense to them. To foolish people, to unsaved people, it was foolish, it was stupid to believe that a man, goes I say a man, hung on a cross, had been tortured all night long. I mean, that beat him until the flesh was coming off of him, and he almost died doing the flocking. They beat him all night long, as the old preachers said. He almost bled out, but they nailed him to an old rugged cross. And uh, hallelujah, he hung there, and he died. I said, he died, y'all. He died. But they couldn't believe that a man born of a virgin, that was nonsense to them. How could a man be born of a virgin? They didn't believe that the Holy Spirit could fill her and that holy thing that she carried would become the Son of God. They, they thought that was foolishness. They thought it was foolish that, that the man who gathered 12 other men by a lake one day and told them to follow him and, and said, uh, listen, if y'all follow me, I'll give something up front. Uh, the foxes have holes. Birds have nests, but I have nowhere. I don't have no, no, no 
key card the Holiday Inn or the Hilton or, or the Marriott. Uh, I, I ain't got none of that. But 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 you come on and follow me. Uh, I don't have no, no food to give you, but I will supply all your needs according to your riches and glory by my Father in Christ Jesus. And he was known to them 12 men to always go sneaking off in the middle of the night and he would leave them sleep and he would go up in the mountain and he would pray for hours and hours and hours. They claimed to be one with their father whom they could not see. But they heard about God the Father. They heard about the Creator. And then one day, uh, Philip, one of his disciples said, well, you, are, you the son of God, why don't you show us the Father? He said, Philip, listen, you've been walking with me for three years. I made the dumb talk. I made the blind to see. And you still haven't seen the Father. I made, I even got up dead, folk. You still haven't seen the Father yet? Let me tell you something that obviously you don't know. He that has seen me has seen the Father. Going back to Jerusalem, and what I'm saying is that now, wait, Jesus, we've been to Jerusalem a couple of times. They told me the last time, if you come back there, they go crucify you. Jesus said, I'm going back to Jerusalem. I'm going to offer up myself, give myself as a living sacrifice. I'm going there to die. And he said, well, Okay, well, since you going there, since we your homeboys, we going back with you. Y'all know the story that, that that night in which he was praying in the garden of Gethsemane. He asked them, "Listen, will y'all pray with me for one hour?" But they fell dead asleep. And when the soldiers came, those same homeboys that followed him for three years, when the soldiers came to arrest them, the Bible said they all ran and fled. I'm talking about the preaching of the cross. Hallelujah. Amen. Those who followed him left him because they followed him to get something out of him. He told them that I'm going to be killed and they thought that was foolishness. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish. What? Foolishness. But he said that's alright because if I do go, and I, if I, be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Now that means two things. It may sound foolish to some, but here's what it means. If I be lifted up, that means that when they lifted him up physically on that cross, his blood that came down made atonement. Atonement means covering. And when it covered up their sins, it offered forgiveness of sins in the sight of God. He made atonement for the sins of the whole world. But it also means, truth number two, every time he's lifted up spiritually, every time on Sunday morning when a preacher preaches this glorious gospel and lifts up and tells the story of why he came and who he is, it's through the preaching of the cross. That the power of God moves, breaking and melting hard hearts and stiff necked souls, and it breathes on them. And as many as receive him, to them he gives power to become the sons of God. I'm glad today. I'm saved. I'm glad that I received him. I'm glad. I'm glad that salvation is simple. Salvation is free. It gives power to the faint. To them that have no might, it increases strength. This power only comes through the preaching of the cross. If you don't understand the cross, you got to go way back to Genesis. When Adam and Eve sinned against him in the garden of Eden, the Bible says they ran because they discovered that 
they were naked. But the Bible says God took an animal, tore his skin off, used the skin to cover up their nakedness. And they realized the fact that he was symbolically covering up their sins from his sight. Hallelujah. He covered up their sins. And ever since then, he told, even when the nation of Israel was coming out of Egypt, he said, listen, take the blood of a lamb. Slit his throat. Spread the blood over your doorposts. And where I see the blood, I'll pass over. That house. And the Bible says that the death angel came through the streets of Egypt. The children of Israel were saved. But the children of Egypt lost their lives. You see, the only thing that can save you from death today is the power of the Lamb of God. He, John the Baptist, said, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, but it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. He didn't overthrow the Roman Empire. He didn't conquer the world for them. It was foolish to them to believe that a dead man could offer them salvation. The Greeks, with their wise thinkers, intellectual philosophers, those who advanced the science of reason and analytical thought, such as Aristotle and Socrates and Plato, thought it foolish to believe in an unknown God. And that's why in chapter 17 in the book of Acts, you can see where Paul took a trip, hallelujah, to a place called Mars Hill. And it was there that the philosophers had built statues for all the known gods of that area. And they said, well, just in case we forgot one, let's build this, this statue right here. We ain't going to give it no name, but we'll call it to the unknown God. Paul came through there one day. And he said, listen, I understand that you all are some religious people, but you've got a statue here to the unknown God. He said, listen, let me tell you something about that God. That God created the heavens and the earth. It was that God who spoke to nothing, and something came out of it. It was that God that made the world and all things, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, and he dwells not in temples made with hands. Neither is worship with men's hands. So as though he needed anything, since he gave it to all life, breath, and all things. For in him we live, we move, we have our being. The gospel may be foolishness to the world, but unto us which are saved. We know it's the power of God unto salvation. It has power to save. Some of y'all used to be liars. And some of y'all used to be cheaters. And some that Paul preached to were murderers and idolaters and lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. He said, but now you've been washed. You've been sanctified. You've been justified. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. The preach word of God. Thank you. 
a century, and man has advanced himself in technology. We ain't got to wait for mama to warm up the food on the stove. Just fix our place and put the plate in the microwave. Set it for one or two minutes, and the, and the food is steaming hot, just like she got to cook it in. Here in the 21st century, my mama had to get the pan.
hymns, some songs that talked about the cross. Like I hear the Savior say, I'm through y'all. That's when indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray.
Say amen again. Amen. I did my best. I did my best. There's only one way to heaven. And it's only one way to live a blessed life here on earth. That's by believing in Jesus Christ. And that he shed his blood where? On the cross for your sins. There may be someone here who does not know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. You would like to come and give him your life today. Come now. Let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, Jesus said, I can make them white as snow. There may be somebody else here. You're a Christian and you don't have a church home. We invite you on behalf of Pastor Hunt. Come and unite here at the Transformation Church. If you're here, as we sing the invitational song, if you're here, come down and give this preacher your hand. Look in God's heart. If you believe he shed his blood for your sins, if you want to live a new life, if you man to be in Christ, he's a new preacher. All of these will pass away. All of these will come new. If you accept Jesus today, he'll make your life somebody. Somebody say amen. He'll make your life better. I said, say amen. We offer Christ to you.
that poster in the back of the church that you probably see every Sunday, it's easy to go along with the world. Mm, I said I was still preaching. But the Holy Ghost tells me to tell somebody, it's easy to go along with the crowd. But see, but when Jesus is in you, something happens on the inside. You are what? Transformed. You're changed into a new creature. Old things pass away. The whole of all things become new. You're transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let me say this one thing, and I'm, I'm through, I'm riding down the expressway, and I hear about all kinds of stars that's coming to Chicago because it's summer, they're going to fill up stadiums. I would name them, the Earth, Wind, and Fire, uh, and uh, there's some old groups that's coming out. Y'all know the new name of the group. Uh, that that one, once upon a time, when I was young, I would go. But now, I once was young, but now I'm old, and I've been through some things, and there's nothing really that they can sing to me now that has helped me with my trials and tribulations. Somebody young better listen to me today. Only one thing can wash away my sins. There's only one person that will help me live this life, pay my bills, put food on the table, and his name is Jesus. That's the only kind of concert I want to go to now. It's one that's lifting up Jesus. Because he said, and I have probably lifted up the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Announcements? Church, sure amen. Amen. Pastor Randall Parker, you can come and give the benediction. Thank you, man. Let's say amen for her. Amen. She's doing what you all heard the announcements that you can cover yourselves. If there's nothing further, we stand in.